In the last episode, I showed you how to make this awesome scalable kelp farm which will automatically cook and craft all of your kelp into mechanical belts because they're very useful. And in today's episode, you'll be learning how to make yourself your very own automatic chocolate factory. Yum yum! So my friends, welcome back to Hobble Creates. My name is Hobble and if you're new here, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. So before we begin today's tutorial, I actually want to refer back to the episode where we actually automated brass ingots. Mostly because that's where I actually showed you how to make this automatic refueling system for our blaze burner. So we've always got ourselves a heated blaze burner. And that's because today we're going to be using the same system. However, I did actually go ahead and condense this down a little bit, make it a little bit more compact so the footprint is a little bit smaller because we need to add on a lot of things to this build today. And of course, we need this because we need to use a heated blaze burner in order to actually make our chocolate. So in order to make ourselves some lovely chocolate, we are going to need some sugar, some cocoa beans and some milk. But by the end of the tutorial, you will have your very own bar of chocolate. So we're going to be starting with the sugar. Sugar is going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience, mostly because I showed you how to automate all of the farming stuff in a previous episode. Go check that out if you've missed that one, it's quite a cool build. So on the right hand side of our blaze burner, we're going to add in a lovely little belt now. This is going to be our input line for all of our sugar. So of course we need to add in a funnel for that. Now we need to make this belt a little bit longer because on this belt we need to add in a millstone. Now from the side we're going to add a funnel and on this side as well, another funnel. But on this belt then, this is where we need to be inputting all of the sugar cane from our sugar cane farm. So let's steal some power from our blaze burner build and we're going to add a vertical gearbox here and here. I think we need to add in a shaft and then finally a regular gearbox. Yes, that is going to spin in the correct direction. Then on here, a vertical gearbox. That way we're going to be able to power our millstone. Up next, why do we actually tackle the milk? Because it's going to be quite a janky build because I'm going to try and keep it a little bit compact. But as always, with all of the tutorials that I've done so far, it's to teach you the basics of how the machines will work. And it's up to you guys then to experiment and just trying to put your own spin on it. Make it compact, make it look pretty. It's completely up to you guys. I'm just kind of giving you the building blocks of how it would go together. Now, as I said, it's going to be a little bit janky, but we're going to be starting with an item drain on top of this brass funnel right here. Right next to that, we are going to have a mechanical pump. And then on the end of this pump, we're going to have a fluid pipe. That's going to be what puts all of our milk into our basin. Now, it does look weird because we are technically clipping through our whisk for our mechanical mixer, but it does work. And this is a valid way to actually build. So, yay, makes our life a little bit easier. Now in front of our item drain, we need to put down a depot. Then moving around the back, we need to add in a temporary block, a depot on the top of that, remove the temporary block. And then right here, we're going to add in a funnel. So our milk buckets are going to end up on this depot, get pulled onto our item drain. Item that drains then kind of roll the item across onto this depot. It'll empty out all of the milk and that'll be a regular bucket on this depot here. Then on the side of this top depot, we need to add in another temporary block and then a depot goes on the top of that and make sure it's kind of facing away because on the side of this depot, we need to add in a brass funnel and it does need to be brass because we need to filter this to only pull out the milk buckets. Now on top of our millstone, we're going to add in one more temporary block. We're going to take a mechanical arm. We're going to give one right click on this depot. That's going to pull the empty buckets. Then we need to double right click on our deployer to say, put all of those buckets into our deployer. And then on top of that temporary block, that's where we're going to put down our mechanical arm. So any buckets that end up on here are going to get put straight into our deployer. Now it's time for the fun bit where we actually need to get ourselves a cow. So underneath our deployer where we've got our mechanical arm, we need to add in one temporary block and then a second one here. And on the end of that temporary block, we need to put down a seat. What this means is anything that lands on this seat will not actually be able to move. It kind of disables the AI of anything that goes onto the seat, which is going to be very important to stop our cow from wandering off. We can remove those temporary blocks and this cow is just going to live here forever. So from where we've got our millstone power, we're actually going to add a shaft onto the end of that and then another cogwheel that's going to give power to our mechanical arm. Then off the side of that, we're going to add in another cogwheel and on top of here, we're just going to pop on a vertical gearbox that's going to give some power to our deployer. Then if we take ourselves an empty bucket and put it onto our depot down here, we should see our mechanical arm go and pick that up. That should then put it into the deployer. It's then going to very quickly make a milk bucket, send it to this deployer over here and input it into our item drain. So let's turn our mechanical pump around and we need to add a little bit of rotation to this mechanical pump, which honestly is going to be quite easy because down here we added in a regular gearbox. We can just bring that power up with some cogwheels, make sure we're facing in the correct direction. We should start seeing a little bit of milk coming into here now. 
The milk start draining and we can see the animation now. There it goes, tumbles over, mechanical arm comes and picks it up and it milks another cow, sending it down here, ready to go around again. So as janky as it is, that is actually our milk system up and running. So we've got sugar and we've got milk. The final ingredient that we need to automate is cocoa beans. And it's going to be the thing that actually slows us down a little bit because cocoa beans do not grow that quickly. So we're going to be building our cocoa bean setup over to the left of our build. So we've got a little bit of rotation power here. So we're going to add in two shafts. And then on the end of that shaft, we're going to add in a vertical gearbox. And then finally on top of there, we need a mechanical bearing. On top of that bearing then we're going to add in four of our radial chassis and on those radial chassis we are just going to add in four of our mechanical harvesters. Then with some super glue in our off hand we are just going to add a barrel onto the top for all of the cocoa beans to actually go into until we're ready to pull them out. And to pull them out above our shaft we're just going to add in a portable storage interface right here that way we can very easily pull those out then send them over into our basin. So let's go ahead and turn the machine on. Now it doesn't really matter which way this contraption spins, it's going to do the same job no matter which direction it goes in. Now in front of our contraption we're going to leave a one block gap and we're going to add a five tall wall of jungle logs. And on those jungle logs facing our contraption we're going to add in our cocoa beans. Now we're only going to need four of them but what we can do in order to speed this all up is we can go to the side, we can add another five of our jungle logs and on the front of those we can plant even more cocoa beans. And then behind it as well, leaving a one block gap, five jungle logs and four more cocoa beans. Then when our cocoa beans grow, they'll get harvested by our harvesters and put into storage, ready for us to then send over with our storage interface into our basin. Now I've actually come to the realization that we can actually make this a lot easier on ourselves if we alter up our contraption. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take away our storage interface from this block here. We're going to take a linear chassis and we're going to plug it into the side of our radial chassis with some super glue. And on this linear chassis, this is where we're actually going to put down our portable storage interface. Because what this allows us to do then, with our exporting storage interface, we can just plug it into the side right here. And that is perfectly in line then to go into our basin. So I've re-enabled the machine now and as you can see as it spins around it connects into our storage interface. Looks a little bit weird with the spinning machines but it definitely does connect as you can see in the tooltip above. We can see the 8 cocoa beans from our storage. So all that's left to do now is actually plug those cocoa beans into our basin. And we're going to do that with a little tiny belt I think. It's going to be the easiest and quickest way. We're going to plug a belt in over here. Brass funnel on one side, brass funnel on the other side. Doesn't need to be brass, but I love the brass. And then all that's left to do is add a little bit of power to this belt. And the simplest way to do that is behind our belt, we're going to add in a vertical gearbox, another vertical gearbox, and finally, another vertical gearbox. And what that should do is, yep, it's now pulled all of our cocoa beans into our basin. Now this is going to be our bottleneck, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't make this contraption a heck of a lot taller. Adding more harvesters, more cocoa beans, more jungle logs, make it as tall as you like, put a storage on somewhere, it'll just make things a little bit quicker, you'll grow more cocoa beans at a time. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of power to our mixer now, so we're going to add in a shaft, a cogwheel, and a cogwheel and there we go my friends we have now generated some chocolate the last thing that we need to do is filter output all of that chocolate into a nice big storage tank ready to be processed into a bar of chocolate or even chocolate covered sweet berries so on the front of our basin we are going to add in a smart fluid pipe this is essentially a brass funnel for fluids and what it allows us to do is we can put a filter in here to say only pull out the chocolate we don't want it to be pulling out the milk now since we don't actually have any chocolate at the moment in order to actually set the filter the easy way, we can just take a regular filter and we're going to drag in from JEI, we're going to drag in a bucket of milk, make sure it's on allow. Now I do believe buckets will work in this scenario because we can't actually drag over liquids. So on the end of that smart fluid pipe we need to add in a mechanical pump, make sure it's facing the right way. And then on the end of that pump we're going to add in a fluid tank. Now you can make this as big or as small as you like. I'm just going to go for a nice simple, uh, I don't know, 2x4, two by, two by something like that. That'll do the trick for now. And let's give our mechanical pump a little bit of juice. We're going to give it some power up like so. And as you can see we have got only chocolate being pulled out into our fluid tank. Now, of course, we want to be holding a chocolate bar by the end of today's tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add one more cogwheel to the end of this line that we've got here. We're going to add in a shaft and another shaft. That's going to give us the correct rotation in order to pull away from our fluid tank. Just makes it a little bit easier to power. On here, we're going to add in a basin, a mechanical press then above that. 
Into our basin we need a mechanical pump and we're just going to add a fluid pipe to connect it to our fluid tank. And a regular gearbox on the end of our belt over here, we need to add in a cogwheel to turn the direction that's going to give power to our pump. And of course we can make this a nice see-through pipe so we can see the chocolate being pulled out. Let's go around to the back underneath our basin, let's add in a shaft into our belt. Vertical gearbox, shaft, shaft and finally a vertical gearbox. We should see that then getting turned into chocolate. Nice. <laughs> Oh, isn't this the dream, my friends? A conveyor belt that just brings you chocolate. But that's not really good for lag, and this will despawn after a few minutes. So let's very quickly throw down a nice cheeky item vault, and on the end of that, we're going to put in a funnel. And we've got an item vault to store all of our chocolate. And there you go, my friends. You now know how to make a fully automatic chocolate factory. If you did enjoy yourself, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye, guys.